Hey there, Mustangs. Here we go with another installment of Distance Learning, FJH. I'm Coach McKeever. I'm going to be guiding you today through the world of multiplying radicals with variables. That's right. So we're going on to our next step, with, which is multiplying radicals with variables. Hopefully you enjoyed the last video of multiplying radicals. So now we're going to add some variables in there. All right. First of all, to do it, we're going to go through a little review. Okay, This should look familiar to you. This is the square root of a squared, b to the third, c to the fourth, and d to the fifth. All right. To solve this, this is review again. To solve this, we look for those perfect squares. All right. So a perfect square is going to be right here, a squared. If you think about it, if you take a squared, to get a squared, you're going to take a times a. That would give you a squared because remember, when you have like bases, you add the exponents. So, radical a squared simply would be a. So, when we get done, we're going to have that outside our radical sign. All right, it's going to be on the outside. Another perfect square is right here, c to the fourth. Because to get to c to the fourth, or the radical c to the fourth, you would take c squared times c squared. Right? So, radical c to the fourth is simply c squared. Now, if you're not catching this, if you have an even exponent on a variable, basically you cut it in half and put it outside. I think that's the easiest way to say it. We had a squared inside, we cut it in half, a on the outside. We had c to the fourth inside, cut it in half, c squared. All right, now we're getting to the odd exponents or the ones that aren't perfect. What we simply have to do here is uh, try to make it perfect. So we go down one. So we have still gonna have b inside. And then that's going to give us radical b squared. So radical b squared times b is going to be b to the third. So what that means is that radical b squared is simply b times b. So what do we do? We cut it in half, and we just need the b out there. And that's going to leave one b inside. Now another way of doing it, which I think is a little bit simpler, is when you have an odd exponent with a variable, one of them has to stay inside. One of them stays and remains, if you will. That's going to cut this down to 4. Now, since it's even now, just take half of it. And there you go. So again, I think it's a little bit simpler. If you have an odd exponent on a variable, all right, make sure you just knock it down by 1 and then take half of it. All right, there's a little bit of review. You have to know this to be able to do today's lesson. All right, so another review. All right, the numbers part of it. The numbers part of it. So this was the last uh, lesson we talked about, but I'm going to try to show you two different ways of doing this to see which way you prefer. All right? The radical 8 times radical 5. You can simply multiply it like it is. 8 times 5 is 40. And then it's inside the radical. Now, the thing is, now what you have to do is make sure that, see if you can break it down, if you can simplify it, if you will. So you have to think of those perfect squares that go into 40. All right? That go into 40. So what I typically do is I cut it in half, 20. Okay, and that's not a perfect square. And then one go below that. So 16. Does 16 go into 40 evenly? No. What about 9? Not that one either. But what about 4? Yeah. Radical 4. Then that would make this 10. Radical 4 times radical 10 will give us radical 40. All right? With that said, radical 4 is just simply 2. So we take the square root of 4 to get 2. So that's going to be 2 radical 10. Don't forget, if you want... You can multiply this on your calculator, and you'll get an answer. Take this, you'll get the same answer. Take this, and you should get the same answer. All right? That's a little hint for checking to make sure you're doing this right. Take this on your calculator, multiply it, type it in as is, get an answer. Type this in, as is, get an answer. Type this in, and you should find all three of those answers should be the same. Now, another way of doing this is to break it down first and then work it out. Kind of like this radical 5. Nothing you can do to that. It's already kind of like in its lowest terms, if you will. But 8, oh yeah, we can change that to 4 and 2. Of course, then we should know that the radical 4 is simply 2. So 8 is actually 2 radical 2. Radical 8 is the same as 2 radical 2. Well, we're going to multiply this by 5. So we multiply what's underneath the radical sign, right? So what's inside, and that's going to give you radical 10. So this ends up being 2 radical 10, which we know is the answer over here, too. Two formats of way of doing it both render the same answer. 
You choose the way that is easier for you. All right, some more review. This is going back to several chapters ago. Remember, if you take x to the third times x to the fifth, you have like bases here. So since you have like bases, you add your exponents. All right, so since we have like bases, the x's are the same, we're gonna add our exponents. So a x to the third times x to the fifth is gonna be simply x to the eighth. Okay, x to the eighth. You add them. How does that work? This is x times x times x. That's if you kind of, you know, blew it up, if you will, make it expanded form. This would be x times x times x times x times x. Woo. And then together, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's x to the eighth. So now, what about the radical signs? What if we start adding radicals in here? All right? It's probably what you're thinking. This is x to the third times x to the fifth, but they're both inside the radical sign. Well, it doesn't really matter. We're still going to just add the three and the five. So what you get is x to the eighth inside the radical sign, right? And you might think, that's it, all right, I'm done. All I did is add the five and the three to get eight, put it inside the radical sign. But the problem here is that this is a perfect square. So x to the fourth times x to the fourth Remember, that's when you uh, break it down even more. So really, what you do is if it's an exponent that is even, you just cut it in half, and that's going to be your answer. So believe it or not, x to the third radical, x to the fifth radical is really just x to the fourth. Yeah, sometimes math is funny that way, isn't it? All right, here we go. Our next example. Our next example. Now, as you can see, I wrote the same thing twice. So I'm gonna do this two different ways, all right? Here we go. The first way, <clears throat> I would simply take x and x to the third and multiply that, which in multiplying that, you really are going to take x to the first and x to the third and add them together, all right? The exponents it is. And then we have y squared and y to the fifth. Well, y squared and y to the fifth is gonna add together to y to the seventh. But remember, that's still inside the radical sign. So it's still inside the radical. So then what? Well, apply the, your radical rules that you know for variables, all right? Even, so since this is even, it goes outside and becomes x squared. Odd, one stays, one stays. This gets one lower. So y to the sixth, and now that's even. So cut it in half, y to the third, all right? This, to me, I like this way. This is probably my favorite way of doing it, but giving you choices, I like to give you options. I'm gonna show you another way over here that you can try, all right, that you can do if you like. All right, radical X, can we break that down at all? No, so we're gonna try to treat these like the separate. We're gonna do this one, and then we're gonna do that one. All right, so X is just gonna stay radical X, but Y squared, when you take this you know, square root of that, it's gonna be Y. So that can be rewritten as, y on the outside, x on the inside. That is one way of doing it. This one, both odd. So since they're both odd, it's gonna be x, y inside. If you find out that when your variables, the only variable you can ever have underneath here is to the first power. I don't know if you've been paying attention to that for the last couple of lessons, but yeah, you can only have ones underneath there. All right, something to think about. So now that's gonna make that two, because we took one away, so that puts x, half of it is out there. If I take that down to four, half of that is gonna be y squared. And there you go. Now what? Well, we're not done quite yet. We're gonna take the outsides and multiply them. So y and y squared would become y to the third, because remember, you have to add those exponents. And then you have this x out here. But look what we have inside. We have x times x, which would be x squared. And then we have also our y. All right, you might be thinking this, I hope that you are. Looky here, we got a perfect square underneath here. So take the square root of that. X squared, the square root of that would be X. So we'd have X, X, Y to the third, and then Y. And of course, to finish this up, when you take X times X, you would get X squared, Y to the third, radical Y, which is the same answer that you got over here. Two routes. Same answer. I prefer this way, but you know, it's each is their own. If you like to do it this way, that's fine also. It'd be best if you understand both ways. <laughs> All right.
Two more examples, all right? Two more examples. I know this video is getting a little long. We just hit the 10 minute mark, but this stuff's a little tougher. All right, here we go. We got radical eight x squared and radical nine x to the fourth. I'm gonna do this simply. I'm gonna take eight times nine underneath and I'm gonna get 72. I'm gonna take x squared times x to the fourth, which really means we're gonna add these exponents. And that's gonna be x to the sixth. And all of that is still underneath my radical sign. Still underneath the radical sign. Now, this stuff is like begging to get out. It's, you know, hopefully, hoping to get out, all right? It's kind of like this is the jail in here. They want to get out of here, all right? So how do they get out? Well, 72, we got to think, what are some perfect squares that we can multiply together to give us 72? What I do is I simply take 72 and cut it in half, okay? 72 and half is 36. Oh, wait a minute. 36 is a perfect square. So this would be 36 times 2. All right, which of course, radical 36 is going to be 6, and then our 2, well, it's still stuck inside there. And then now, look at the variable. We got x to the 6. If you remember, when you have an even amount of x's, all right, even amount, simply just cut it in half and put it outside, and that's it. So your answer is 6, x to the 3rd, radical 2. All right, now again, I'm gonna do that over here, but I'm gonna break it down first. I'm gonna put everything in simplest form and then work on it. Radical eight, okay, that's four times two. Four times two, radical four times two. So that's really two radical two. Now what about x squared? It comes out and becomes x, right? So this is the same as that. Yes, it is. All right, radical nine. Oh, we know that's three. X fourth, well, that's a perfect square. So x squared times x squared. So what do we put outside? Simply x squared. At this point, we can't stop yet because we have to get rid of this multiplication sign and we're trying to simplify this. Well, multiply the things you can. Two times three, six. X times x squared would be x to the third power. Remember, you have to add the one and the two to get third power. And radical two. As you can see, two different ways of doing this, same answer. This way is just to multiply everything from the beginning and then work it down. Sometimes you get a big number here, that's fine. Here, we're gonna break it down first and then multiply. Two options, same result. All right, getting to our last and final uh, example here. All right, here we go. Four times 20, 80. X times X x squared. y to the third times y to the fourth, y to the seventh. And everything is underneath that radical sign. Everything. Now, try to break it down. Try to put it in simplest form. All right. What can we multiply together to get us 80? And remember, one of the numbers has to be a perfect square. Okay. One of them has to be a perfect square. What I came up with, 16 times 5 which is really radical 16 times really radical five. Well, radical 16 simply is four. So the numbers part of this becomes four radical five. All right, now let's go in and mess with these variables. X squared, all right, that's a perfect square. All right, I like to put squares around it, you know, so to show it's a perfect square. Well, what we know to do is just half it. X, there we go. Odd, oh, one of you have to stay behind. So now that's y to the sixth, half that, y to the third, and you're done. This is in simplest form. All right, now the, I'm gonna do this again, and we're gonna get the same answer, it's just a different round. And remember, to do the numbers part, to do the numbers part, you can simply type in the calculator, radical four times radical 20, and that'll give you an answer. Radical 80, type that in, it'll give you the same answer. Four radical five will give you the same answer. So you can check the numbers. All right, you can check on your calculator with the numbers. The variables, gotta know what you're doing. All right, <clears throat> so this one, I'm gonna break it down first. So I'm gonna take radical four, which is two. X has to stay in. Y the third, one of them's gonna stay, that becomes two, and then half it. So I'm breaking this down first. I'm gonna get it in simplest form. 20, 20 would be four times five, which of course radical four, is two, and then we have our five underneath here. All right, that should be a, you know, no surprise, we have five here and a five here in our answer. 
All right, uh, now what about X? Oh, it stays in here. Y to the fourth, that's a perfect square, so it becomes out. All right, so again, I simplified it first, and now I'm gonna multiply it back up to get our answer here. All right, what do I mean by multiplying? We're gonna take two times two, which is four. Y times Y squared, which is Y to the third, okay? Now inside, inside, we have five, X times X, which is X squared. That might be the tricky part for some of us. We might forget that. And then Y times nothing, you know, so there you go. And then lastly, you got to remember that this X squared is not, you know, simplified. So what do we need to do? It needs to half it. Okay, this is a perfect square. So it comes out here. There's my X, Y to the third, five Y. All right, guys, I know this is kind of lengthy, but this stuff is getting a little bit tougher. Good luck. Uh, as always, if you need any assistance, contact your teachers and let us know. We can help you out in any way. All right, this is Coach McKeever signing out. Have a great Mustang day.